What if there was a chance that your mining rigs were more profitable than you thought? What would you say if I told you that there is a brand new crypto mining operating system that just dropped into alpha today that does some amazing things? First thing, it goes ahead and handles CPU and GPU mining rigs. Second thing, it supports all of the major algorithms out there. There's a few that are still in the works, but it handles almost all of them out there. Third, it supports remote overclocking. Fourth, and this is a big one, it supports auto profit switching. Fifth, it supports manual or auto overclocking with keeping your profit switching in mind. Sixth, the mining operating system on your rig is actually Linux based and can be run on a solid state drive as well as a USB drive. Seventh, it's super easy to install. And finally, you can manage all your rigs from your computer via the web GUI or from your cell phone. If you made it this far in the video, you're probably rather intrigued and curious. I certainly was when the team over at NiceHash approached me several months ago and brought this brand new project to my attention. So in today's video, we're going to be setting up the brand new NiceHash OS version two on one of my GPU mining rigs step by step. But before we do, let's go ahead and pay some bills. Today's video is sponsored by MinerPool.pro. Out with the old, in with the new. MinerPool.org is now MinerPool.pro. With the new name comes a new mining pool. MinerPool.pro is excited to announce the launch of their brand new pool for Meowcoin. With Stratum support for Asia, Europe, US East, and finally US West servers. Finally, we can't forget about the new loyalty program by MinerPool.pro to earn additional Meowcoin for your uptime. Go check out MinerPool.pro's new Meowcoin pool today. All right, guys. So this is our GPU mining rig that's going to be our guinea pig today. This is actually my cousin's rig, and this was a request by him to put this rig on NiceHash. And I've had some issues with NiceHash and Windows and stability, and I think most of it was Windows. So I thought, hell, let's give this brand new operating system a chance, especially on Linux, because I'm a huge fan of Linux. So let me go ahead and show you this rig here. So this is a handful. Check it out. All of your EVGA little mini 1060s through the top here. And then down below, we have the NVIDIA Founders Edition uh, as well. And that's a 1080. We then have a 1660 Ti. This is the MSI one. We have an EVGA uh, 1060. We have uh, 1080 and then another 1060 here. So it's about 10 total cards here. They're older, they're all 10 series, uh, but he is interested in continue mining with his rig. And he actually pays me for the electric each month, so I don't mind maintaining it for him. These are the fans in the back that I did install more recently. If you guys see, a little more heavier duty. They, they do over 100 CFM and do a great job of cooling these older rigs. Now, I am. this is pretty much all you're going to need for today to get this up and running. So I'm using a solid state drive. This is a Kingston. Uh, if you're interested, you can also use a USB drive. This is for the solid state drive to plug into my computer. This is actually a hard drive replicator. There's actually like you can see the SATA ports inside there and in here, but I only ever use it just to hook it right up to my computer via USB um, and it works perfectly. If you guys need either a solid state drive or you need uh, this interface adapter for your computer for the solid state drive, I'll put links to those down below. And then I'm just using a screwdriver and the screws to screw it into our rig. So let me go ahead and we're gonna get this guy plugged into our computer with the solid state drive and then I'll see you over on the computer. All right guys, so we're gonna make this rather quick. So step number one, we're going to go over to the Bellina Etcher website and download the software. I'll put a link for each of these steps down below if you guys need the direct link to the website. When you're over here, you're gonna click the green button for Windows and you're gonna download Bellina Etcher. Okay, step number two. Now this is gonna be listed in two places I don't know yet. I know this goes live on Monday and it's currently Saturday. So I know for a fact this goes live on Monday and then it'll be either listed here under miners when you log into your NiceHash page where you can download all the different NiceHash software or it's going to be available over on their Discord. I'm not sure which one, but in the instructions are directly down below, I'll make sure that I provide you guys the direct link to the image file, which is for NiceHash OS version two for Linux. 
All right, so now we're actually going to uh, put the image onto the solid state drive or your USB drive. So make sure the hard drive is plugged into your machine with whatever adapter you're using, if you're using a solid state drive or your USB drive is plugged into your machine. Once that's done, go ahead and load up Belina Etcher. We're then going to select our file that we downloaded. There it is, there's our image file, the nice hash OS, and this is version two. We're gonna select that. The next step is we need to select the media it's gonna go on. Now this auto selected it for me, but if it's not the right disc, make sure you hit change and pick the right hard drive and hit flash. It's gonna prompt you. If you're in Windows, just hit yes, and then you're set and ready to go. Let it go ahead. If it's on a solid state drive, it should be pretty quick, done within a minute or two total. A USB drive though is going to take significantly longer. I'd say about 10 times longer, but I don't really know. It depends on your computer speeds, read writes, USB drive, all that fun stuff. I'll see you back here in less than two minutes on my side when this is done. All right, guys, so that finished, we're good to go. So now this is an important part. Go over to your hard drive. If you're using an adapter like mine, there's actually a power button. If it's just a cable, unplug it. Or if it's a USB drive, unplug it, wait two minutes and then plug it back in or turn it back on. So why do we do that? Well, traditionally, when you turn it off, wait a little bit and then turn it back on, it will actually assign it a lot, a drive letter in Windows and you'll see it right here under my computer. But if you don't, here's what you can do. And it didn't do it for me this time, so I'm really happy so I can show you. So you're gonna go ahead and open up computer management on your computer. And then you're going to scroll down to find it. You can actually see it's right here, look. It says nice hash OS. This is the partition, it's actually drive four. You can see it up here as well. Uh, but there's no drive letter assigned to that partition. That's why it's not showing up in my computer. So you can just right click on it and do change drive letter and path. And you can see there isn't one. So I'm just gonna hit add and it's gonna assign it to F. Perfect, that's fine, hit okay. Bam, what did that do? Well, it assigned it a drive letter. So now when I go back into my computer, take a look. There's the F drive. This is just like Hive OS. Open up the F drive, and now you're gonna see there's a config file. Next step, open up Notepad on your computer, click the config file that you saw there, and just drag it literally into Notepad. Bam, it's opened up the config. Now don't worry, it's not scary. You're literally putting in two pieces of information. The first one is you need to go over to your NiceHash account and copy your mining address. Let me show you where to find that. All right, so I'm logged into my test NiceHash account. And in the upper left-hand corner, after you log into your account, you click on mining and then mining address. Bam, it's going to give us our mining address. Just copy that. Next, right between the two uh, quotations, you'll paste it. So there'll be a quotation on each side, the left and the right side, and you'll keep everything the exact same way. Don't mess up the syntax, guys. Be super careful. The next thing is worker name. Click your a cursor right between the two of those and give it a name. I'm going to call it changeling. There. Perfect. Now hit file and save. We're going to close that file. We're going to close out of this and now power off your adapter or unplug your USB drive and your hard drive and go install it in your mining rig. Once that's done, power on the mining rig itself. All right, guys, so I'm gonna to try to talk quite a bit louder because those fans definitely are loud behind me on my mining rig. So it's been about two minutes. And as you can see, it instantly booted into NiceHash and you can see that my rig is online and available. It's actually benchmarking everything now. So a few things to keep in mind. If you're using a USB drive, you need to make sure that you go into like your BIOS and set your USB drive to boot first or to make sure it's in your boot order. If you're using a solid state drive like I am, mine just booted right to it right away. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to have a monitor hooked up to it. I didn't have to hit any special keys. It just booted right into it instantly. All right, so there's a lot of really cool stuff I wanna show you, but we have to wait for the benchmarking to finish. So let the benchmarking run. It takes a few minutes. It does quite a bit of testing across all of your GPUs. It tests out different overclock settings and configurations. As you can see, it tests out different miners as well. And we'll go through those. I'm not going to show you step by step, but I wanna show you a lot of these features because I'm gonna be honest, I just started tinkering with this earlier today and man, you definitely go down a rabbit hole. So let me check back with you guys in a few minutes when the benchmarking is over. All right, so benchmarking finished. I'm gonna to try to talk even louder because the fans have really ramped up. Um, but there's a lot you can do in here. There is the kind of plug and play option. 
but I know a lot of you guys are hobbyist miners and you really enjoy getting into the nitty gritty. So don't make assumptions because there's a lot of really cool features in here and I'll show you. So first thing we're going to do is with this new version with Linux, everything like that, you have the ability to do a lot of customizations on a GPU level, not a rig level, but a GPU level. So once you're in here, you're going to hit optimize in the top right hand corner. And then we're going to pick a GPU. So we're going to go, let me close that out. Optimize. Perfect. We're going to pick like our first GPU here. You see, okay, we've selected it and now we have a lot of options here. So let's look at them from top to bottom. And then I'll kind of show you guys how to tweak this. So you can come in on a GPU level and you can set what algorithms you would like it to use and not use. For this situation, I'm just gonna select all of them. I want it to use all the algorithms out there when it's looking at profit switching. The next thing is miners. Let's say that you prefer one miner over another or one miner is more efficient than another, especially with like LOL miner recently. You can set all the miners or just one. I'm gonna say all the miners. The next thing is overclock settings. So you can set the overclock settings for all the algorithms, or you can come in here and say, okay, I'm going to select auto Lycos, and then I'm going to select, I want it to use NB minor. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and set the overclock settings. So literally now you're down to the GPU level, the algorithm level and the minor level, and then you can set your overclock settings. So you could do this for each GPU for each algorithm so that you've kind of fine tuned these the way that you want, which is really, really nice. I mean, you could spend hours in here tweaking this to exactly where you want it. After you do some of these, you then can hit like save profile at the bottom. You could do the same thing with the fans. Check it out at the bottom here. You have fans There's a new fan profile and you have a few different options. You can make it a fixed speed. So like right now it's at 51% or you can give it a target temperature uh, or you, for me, you can go all the way down to like target GPU and VRAM hotspots. You know, there's lots of options. What I like to do is I like to set it on a target temperature and then I'll say like, okay, my target temperature is like 70 degrees Celsius, let's say, or, or something like that. And then you can hit save and then you can hit save new profile. So I'm going to take this, uh, and I'm going to do something similar, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to affect the fan. So like, I can see off to the left that some of my uh, GPUs currently, because right now everything's auto. I haven't saved any profiles or anything like that. So NiceHash is actually adjusting all my overclock settings for me. It's adjusting the algorithms. It's adjusting the minor. Like it's doing everything for me. But as you guys know, like auto is never the, the best of the best, you know, it, it'll get you by doing everything auto with switching, everything auto with the minor and everything auto with the algorithm. But to really fine tune it, to get the most out of this entire process and this operating system, you should really try to tweak this per card, per algorithm, and also uh, per minor if you want to get the most out of this. So what you can do is you can save your profile. So like here, I'm just going to go ahead for all intents and purposes. After you build this, you just hit apply and test at the bottom and that'll apply it to the, it'll apply it. It'll test it. It actually pretty cool. It puts it in like a test mode. So like I can hit apply and test. And then on the left-hand side, that GPU is going to go into like a testing mode. You see it? And it's actually just testing stability to make sure it works. After you're done, you've let it run for a little while, just hit stop test. It'll stop the test and then you can hit save new profile at the bottom. Now, once you've saved that profile, I'm just going to write test one, two, three in here. It hasn't applied it to the card yet. It hasn't done anything with it yet. You've just built it. So now to go ahead and apply it to the card and there's some of the stuff guys that you can apply like universally. So if you're running like all the same GPUs and stuff, you can apply this to all, all the GPUs available. So what you can do is go to the very top here to bundle manager. And now this is where you're going to see one that I created earlier, which all this does, this bundle is it sets all my fans to max hundred percent on all of them. Um, but your profiles are in here. So you see how I have test one, two, three, which is nice under bundles. It's very similar, like a bundle I'm trying to think how to compare this here. A bundle is a collection of profiles. And a profile is a collection of configurations per GPU. So I could take this whole bundle and like one bundle for this rig and then apply it to the rig itself. Like I could do new bundle and see, I could just do call it new bundle 
And then I can pick like green and a smiley face as the icon. Create new bundle. Now you see all my profiles on the side. All you have to do is like move them over and it will go and now, and then you can just save it and then you can apply that bundle. So I've already created my bundle for all my fans just for this video. And I wanted to show you guys it. So I want to go back to my miners here and I'm at the very top. You see right here, there's like this uh, drop down that's available. These are all the pre-made bundles. So the one bundle I want to apply to this is I want all my fan speeds to be 100%. That's just all intensive purposes. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm on that rig. I'm going to hit the drop down and hit my bundle. That's just the one I made uh, for all intensive purposes. Now it's literally going to apply it. And I, I literally hear the fans ramping up behind me. And the fans are now going to go to 100% before they were just adjusting based off of that fixed speed. But for this example, it's 100%. So let me go ahead and refresh this here. Open up my rig. It's so loud. <laughs> and they're all ramping up there, which is great. It'll take a little bit to update. Last but not least, guys, I want to follow up with this in a few weeks and just see how profitable it's been, how it's worked out. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with NiceHash, my last kind of PSA with that, NiceHash does not do profit switching based off of the current market conditions. It actually does profit switching based off of its hash rate marketplace so if you're not familiar with that I actually have a full video on nice hash giving more details and some more explanations i'll put that directly down below that will be helpful but in layman's terms customers come to nice hash purchase hash rate and then nice hash goes ahead and uses you as the miner to provide the rigs to fulfill that hash rate so your profit switching is going to profit switch off of the customer's demand that's come in the front door to NiceHash as a front end customer. So it's a little bit different than your traditional market and what you can make on the market side. So it's not really apples to apples because mining one thing on, on a traditional mining versus that same thing on this might be a little bit different actually for the profit. So try it out, test it out. Let me know how it makes out for you. I'd love to hear from you guys. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial and guide, go ahead and leave a but one of these down below to say, hey, I liked it and leave a comment down below. Let me know. I'm really eager to see if anybody has a chance to try this out. I am eager to get a rig on this for a week or two and fine tune it because man, there's quite the rabbit hole to go down. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.